Hello, and welcome to hole one at the Cranbrook College of the Rockies course. We're teeing off here. I'm throwing first, throwing a Fusion Judge. It's my first throw today. It's a little windy, and it stalls out kind of funny on me. I wasn't really prepared for the wind. Caitlin's lining up a throw with a Sting, and she does the same thing. Throws a little high, and the wind just pushes it off to the side. She gets kind of a, an ugly lie, but she has a, a nice hyzer up shot, puts her right beside the basket. I got knocked down to here, and I'm just gonna try and do the high layup so I don't get any ground play. This is like dusty, hard dirt we're playing on, so they tend to slide away really badly if they have any speed coming into the ground. And Caitlin and I are both going to bang in our par putts. I was wondering about the balloon on top of the basket when we showed up. And it's actually for glow golf. I'd never seen that before. They put a glow stick inside the balloon to make it glow bigger. Anyway, we're now at hole two. It's 274 feet. Falls straight down this fairly tight fairway before fading off hard to the right. This hole just begs to be thrown forehand. Lining up a gator three here. Pushing towards those trees, but it ends up just about perfect and I think I ended up about you know, eight feet from the basket. Caitlin's thinking of doing something similar with the backhand. She's got a sting right here. And then she just doesn't quite give it enough. Recently she's been cranking that thing and it's been turning really hard so she got a little afraid of it and didn't quite do what she wanted. She chips up from the side of the fairway and she'll bang in her three. And this is my birdie. It's just tapping in there. Feeling pretty good about that one because I don't usually throw forehand. At least not very well. Hole three. It's 207 feet. Going straight and then coming left. It's kind of an island green and very, very steep on the left side of the fairway. If you hit that hillside at all with that uh, hard packed dusty dirt, you're probably going to slide all the way to the bottom under that fence, which will put you OB. I'm throwing an old gummy champion rhino here. And it's hard to see because I'm standing in the way, but I hit a clump of three trees and fall early there. It's probably a good thing because I threw that thing pretty hard and I would likely have skipped and slid off the end. Caitlin throwing a sting again. And she hits it pretty hard, gets the full turn. <laughs> and it kicks her off to the right. I know she was trying to stay away from the left side, but she might have uh, worked a little too hard with that and ended up biting her in the arse. Um, she's in jail pretty hard, so she just chips out to the fairway. She's got her super death putt, and she just kind of lays up to the basket, doesn't want to mess with that hillside too much. This is mine. And... I'm a little nervous, so I try and get it in there soft, and yeah, it works out. I get the birdie. Felt pretty good to get that one. And Caitlin will tap hers in as well. So, we've got hole number four, 299 over this gully. Um, it's also fairly tight, and it has a slight turn at the end. So if you can take a, a putter, that'll get a late flip for you or something you can throw super straight. Probably want to land about here and slide up to the basket. Leaving it high messes with a lot more branches and it's way dangerous. I'm throwing a judge here. I try and force it to turn a little bit because that one's pretty straight. And I end up throwing into a tree on the right side, but luckily I don't go down the hill. Caitlin going with the seer here. And she really wanted to hit the gap and not early release, which she did, but didn't quite give it enough. Luckily she stays up on the hillside, which is rare. Usually you'll roll down to the bottom and be forced to tomahawk out. A little upshot with her putting magnet. I think she ends up pretty close on this one. And mine, I'm quite far away, but there's nothing to stop you from running it behind the basket, so I give it a little bit of a jump putt. And I thought I got that one. You can see the look on my face because I thought it was in there, but I was just about six inches short and I missed. And 
Caitlin bangs in her putt, and that's a pretty good putt for either her or I. And I didn't get the clip of me tapping mine in, but I was about five feet from the basket. Hole five. Um, this one follows around a gradual turn. However, if you saw, there's a slight gap on the right side, and I always go for the gap because I don't like throwing the forehand all the way around, and I find it a little finicky. You can see I'm excited because I thought I got the ace there for a second. I was about four inches high and carried past the basket. Caitlin going for the stingray, trying the Heiser flip up the sucker's gap, same as I was doing instead of taking the intended fairway. Um, but unfortunately here, she she gets nervous and uh, throws low into the ground. Otherwise, it would have been a great toss. She gets put in jail again, but luckily she's got a straight line to the basket here and uh, <laughs> hits the one tree in the way. She's going through her back looking for the right shot because there's even more trees obstructing her. And she just goes for the, the chip up layup. Almost rolls down the backside. I was excited about mine, but I rolled all the way to the bottom here. I'm super not excited about this. I played this course again today and Caitlin ended up down there. She threw a tomahawk straight into the basket. It was one of the most intense tomahawks I've ever seen. My little forehand flex to try and get through all these trees hits a tree behind the camera and kicks out to the side. I still have an obstructed putt, but I'm trying to get around it. And no, I hit the cage and the look on my face says it all. While Caitlin taps hers in and I unfortunately end up having to take a bogey on this one. And for a 270 something foot hole, that doesn't feel very good. So hole six, 299, par three. You go over these short shrubby trees and then into this opening, pushing it back slightly to the right from the tee. Usually I throw a putter. Sometimes I'll throw a mid range like a theory or a comet. Here I'm throwing a comet. I get it a little too high. I still get the nice turn I wanted out of it, but that usually would carry probably 60 plus feet behind the basket and you're in a really bad spot. Luckily for me, I actually happened to hit the two trees right behind the basket and drop beside it. Caitlin going Stingray again. She really likes Heiser flipping this thing for uh, you know a, a longer flight that turns right, but she just grip locks it and cranks it. Luckily she gets some distance and it doesn't hit any trees, so she won't have the worst shot. She's going to go forehand here to try and scoot around these guys up to the basket. Throws it a little low, but it doesn't end up too bad. You can see she's not very happy with it, but at least she's around those first set of trees. And she lines this one up like she's going to putt it, but her putting style doesn't really allow her to, to turn that direction. And then she'll tap her putt in see mine behind there. I got super lucky hitting these trees. Based on how high I was coming in, I would have been gone. But I'll take any two I can get. Hole number seven, 233 feet. This hole carries fairly straight, gradually turns right, and the pin is off to the right side of the fairway. It's fairly tight in here. And you have to have a pretty good drive to get anywhere near the basket. Again, I don't throw forehand very well, so I'm going Comet again, trying to get that turn to follow the road. And it actually works out a lot better than I expected. This one, if I'm trying to turn a disc, I usually turn it too hard into that first set of trees to the right. Um, or I early release because I'm scared of it. That one ended up pretty nice. Caitlin hits hers pretty hard, but gets a little nose up and it fades off to the left. She's going to try the forehand around the outside uh, to get through these trees and get close to the basket. Works out pretty good. Here we are at my drive. I've already marked it with my mini. I'm still fairly far out, probably circle's edge. But uh, yeah, I'll take that drive anytime. I usually don't do very well on this hole at all. And obviously that putt was, was uh, better than usual for me. Caitlin has this weird putt through this V of trees. 
and she actually bangs it home. I was super impressed with that butt as well. So hole eight goes downhill, follows the road, and then turns back hard right. Uh, with a lot of these holes, this is a course you can really capitalize on if you've got a good forehand. But again, I, I don't have one of those. So there's actually a big gap in the trees on the side. And if you throw backhand, you can hit the gap perfectly and end up, you know, circle's edge. And it's hard to see here, but there's actually a pretty significant tailwind and it pushes that Thunderbird down quite a lot. I didn't get it out, uh, get it in there as far as I wanted. Caitlin Stingray again. You can see the trees moving with the wind and same thing happens to her. It just gets pushed straight down. Luckily, she's kind of in a, a decent spot to get at the basket. She's thinking Stingray again to turn around these trees. And yeah, it works out almost perfectly. Really impressed. Um, here's mine. You can see that's a judge there. That's because <laughs> I landed behind this set of trees and didn't get a clip. And my putt hit the first tree in front of me and I only advanced about five feet. But luckily I got the next putt in. So that would be a three for me, even though you only saw two. And Caitlin taps hers in in the meantime. Finally, hole number nine, the last for this video. 463 feet, 463 feet. It, uh, it's a really great hole because you've been trapped in these short technical ones and you finally feel like you can let one go. Um, fairly open fairway until you get to the set of guardian trees the camera's just passing now into a fairly open green with a slight slope. It's not much, but it is enough to give you a roll away. I'm really excited to let one go here. Lining up with a Prodigy D3, it's fairly beat up, big distance with the flip. And I hit the end of the tee pad and kind of get weird action on my feet, which makes me hug the right side and I've hit an early tree and shot out to the right. I'm feeling kind of upset here because this was my chance to really let one go and uh, I squandered my opportunity. Caitlin going sear, just trying to hit the fairway here, doesn't want to get stuck in the trees. And yeah, it works out really good for her. She's just on the edge on the left side. Same thing going sear again, adding a little more hyzer. Trying to get around those guardian trees I was talking about. And I think she lands a little short, but in the right direction. I am here. I actually got fairly good distance off that tree kick, just doing an approach with the champion rhino here. That's, that's probably the longest distance I've ever gotten off of a tree kick. Yeah, Caitlin a little short in the trees, tries to get the putt up there. Leaves it high and left, and then we'll both tap in our putts. That's a three for me and a four for Caitlin, and it'll bring us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, let me know, and uh, I'll try and keep making them. Thanks for watching, guys.